Let's go back to one. Shylock. Oh, okay. Because I want to, again, you were, what, prize turkey? No, prize... Prize uh, hog. Prize hog. You were prize hog. You know, the guy brought in the Oscar nominated, and wow, he's, you know, there's an indigenous guy, and he's going to play Shylock, and it's at the main stage. It's still the source of your fear when you were on stage. You, worried it. you said you were terrified. I was because, because of I, what people would think with you because no, you I, wouldn't I could care less. execute it or why were you so afraid? I guess the block between me and the text was hard for me because I don't know Shakespeare. My wife said, listen, if you can do Thompson Highway stuff, you can do Shakespeare. And I said, I don't know if I can do this. I agonized. It took me almost a year to figure out what this is and what's, what's iamic pentameter. I used to call it uh, diuretic babbling or something. I, I forget what I called it. But, and uh, eventually by the end of it, 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 it came along and at the same time I was doing Shakespeare. I was doing Mice and Men over at the uh, Tom Patterson. But Shakespeare was extremely difficult. I'd get there at four o'clock in the afternoon and run the scenes, all, all scenes about four or five times before I even went on stage that night. And uh, it just became a little, little easier and easier and easier. And uh, the, the difficulty, I guess, was all in my mind. I didn't like Shakespeare. It was a hangover from high school that I didn't like about it because they made a study, Virgin of, Merchant of Venice, which I just didn't understand. What the hell? What's this got to do with anything? You know, I, what do you th what, on grade nine, you know everything anyway, you know, so. What am I ever gonna use Merchant of Venice in my life? I thought, what good is that? Well, by God, there you are. You're standing <laughs> right in stage doing Shylock. And that. But it was just also being in on the stage, on that stage with we're, we're walked once, all this amazing talent and, and wonderful actors, wonderful theater actors I couldn't even hold a candle to. So what's going on in that, you know, I don't know you very well, but I know you a little bit, and here we've been talking for whatever an hour, and you don't seem to be off put by the Hollywood or the 80 page contracts or directors on film sets, that doesn't seem to put you off your balance at all. And here it was on a stage that you were, were put off your natural balance. And I'm curious about that. Yeah, it was, I was thrown off balance. I, I was very uncomfortable, very, very, very uncomfortable trying to do it because everybody who I worked with had been doing the Stratford seasons year after year after year. And uh, I thought, how am I, gonna, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? What am I gonna do? I have to act. I have to stage act. I hadn't been on stage in, I don't know, eight years, I suppose, or whenever I got the, the last, uh, when's the last thing I did? Dry lips, I guess, I'd have moved to Capus Casey was the last piece I did at the Royal Alex. And uh, it was a long time. It was sort of like crawling, taking this hand puppet out of a trunk and waving it around going, okay, say what you gotta say, but do what you have to do. And uh, it, it just kind of overwhelmed me for a while. I'd stay up all night. And my wife said, look, just calm down. So I bless her every morning. I thank God she's in my life. I thank where I'm going that uh, she's beside me. And not holding my hand, but just being there and my partner in life. And she'll always will be, she's always gonna be there. And, but she guided me through it without making me look stupid, without making me feel bad. She didn't really say, oh, you can do it, you were great, you were marvelous. She never used any of that stuff. She just said, you can, 
You can. I know you can. So I said, if you know, then I guess I can. So I worked and worked and worked. I worked my ass off trying to get the thing just right. I was never happy with any performance, never happy at all. Wow. That's one of the worst things I did, but uh, it was hard. It was very hard. I still have a thing about the theater there. <laughs> I've seen some very good productions. I've seen incredible actors on that stage, but I never thought I'd be there looking at the audience and watching the audience behave. How, how rude and crude the audience was. Then one night I thought, when Shakespeare wrote these plays, his audience was rude and crude too, and they lasted, the plays lasted six to eight hours. In the, they were a source of entertainment, and people yelled at the actors and threw things and stuff like that. How would I have survived that? And I laughed, and I, because my nephew is a, he's a, like a seer, I guess. He's a, he reads your, he can read your spirit. He can tell you about yourself, the things you don't know. So I went to him before I even went to uh, thought about uh, Stratford, and he said, "You know, in your past life, you were a subsistence farmer." Not here, but somewhere else, someplace on a small island. And you were an actor, and you did Shakespeare, and you weren't very good at it. Wow. And you were a subsistence farmer, and you were involved in a three-way romantic triangle. And he told me life, my pre-life, and I thought, holy Christ. And there I was, standing on stage in Stratford, the, the, the triangle was gone. I didn't have that anymore. And the subsistence farmer, I love gardening. I was, I was, I ended up, uh, what did I do? Oh, I ended up as a landscaper. I was landscaping for a year or so, two couple of years. But there I was on stage expected, and I was expected to be good. <laughs> 